everyone. Merry Christmas. We are at my church here. Show you a little video of what I'm using on Sunday mornings. Not mine. Not mine. It's uh, Sunday evening and had some problems this morning. But this is kind of what I'm running. Got my got a Korg keyboard, the churches, as a SV1, pretty decent keyboard. I'm actually not using it for the, any of the sounds though. I'm using it to send MIDI to my iConnect Audio 4. And that little bugger is the reason I'm up here because, um, I don't know, it hasn't worked. Came in the night and it worked fine. Also running a powered USB hub. This is a nifty little one from Anchor. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ports. Those are the blue ones you can see there. Uh, that are the USB hubs. And then each of the ports that are actually working have a blue light. You can see there's three more ports over there that are actually charging ports. Um, and the two cords, the green one there, is running to this little miniature Novation launch key. You know, talk about what I'm using that for. Um, it's kind of cool because I can use that to take with me in my backpack and mess around and, and create sounds and such for Sunday morning or one of the you know the bands at the school or whatever, or just play with. But it's nice and small and it's bus powered. It'll um, I can plug it straight into my iPad through the camera connector kit. And it works really well. Now, um, right now we're currently on these Behringer monitor things, but more on that later because we're working on getting some Presonus things. But this app is the new one that I have discovered. This is KeyStage. It's an iPad app, and what it allows me to do is take, you can see right here I've got four um, synth apps running, running Korg module, which is not an audio unit yet, but it's inter app audio and it, it works to, with key stage. Um, audio kits digital D1, audio kit synth one, and IM one. And there's other ones that work with it too. There are, there's a couple that don't work with it, but, um, a lot of them do, but here's the beauty of this one is that I can come in, well, I should show you this because this is just kind of cool. You can see I've got, there's Korg module, there's Digital D1, this is the IM1 app, and this is the Synth1 app. And by the way, this is the, the iConfig for the, I, um, the iConnect device that I've got over there, the Audio 4, and it actually worked. Like I said, let me see if I can show you what it was doing. So earlier this morning and uh, Tuesday night in practice, if I started this, right here, you would not find I connect. So you can see it came right up. No problems tonight. So it's just really frustrating. But back to the main objective here. I've got one, two, three, four synth apps running. And they're all connected to, to this key stage. And what I can do is I can sit, um, you can see along the top here, I've got different songs that we did. Um, and I've got different sections to each song. And for each song, I, I can select different parts and, and different sounds. And key stage does all the work for me with, with jumping through all the hoops and making it really fast and easy to select different sounds on these different synth apps. I never leave this app once I get it set up. So this is the um, Korg module, the K, the, um, it's playing um, the Mercado, the KA Pro Mercados. And um, let's see if I can get out of here. You can see over here, this is where I go in and I can select, I've got some different, um, program changes set up, and Korg module has kind of a limited ability to change sounds. Um, you can see there's only, what, like, where I got, like six right there. 
if I jump over to Korg Module, I'll show you where it is. Korg Module has a nice set list feature here, which allows you to use this by itself. But inside a set list, you add different sounds. And then these are the only sounds that you can select. Now, I haven't tested to see how many I can add in here. But, you know, for a typical performance, you're not going to have a ton of sounds in there. So if I send over um, a program change number zero, it selects the Mercado strings. Or a number one, they're a number off. It, it selects the, phys the physical model strings, and then number two, and so on and so forth down the list. So those ones, that, that responds to this. Now all these other apps, um, you can see Audio Kit has actually done really nice job with this. If I come in here to Audio Kit, it actually shows me right next to each of my sounds. So if I really like this one right here, um, you can see I have to send two pieces of information. The number three is the program change, and the number two is um, the other part of that program change. And um, so if I look at um, this first part for this, you can see, like, for this silent Anna pad, the program change was one, and then on the MSB part, you have to send a controller change of, of value number one. And Audio Kit in both their apps, Synth One and um, Digital D1, they both, um, Digital D1 and then Synth One, they both, like I said, they, they show you right there. So on Digital D1, here's that Princess Anna. If I can hit it right, you can see there it is. Program change 10, bank 1, which corresponds to those over there on the side. Um, and then um, I can go in so I can tell I want strings for, from that, from the module, and I want a pad from there. And then for the verse, I want to slightly change it up. So now I just add in synth 1, doing a pad, and then digital one doing the same pad as earlier, but I take out those strings. And then for the choruses, then I add back in um, a bigger string and take out the other pad. And then you can see I just go right on straight across. And uh, sometimes I use an app and sometimes I don't. Depends what I kind of think it, it all calls for. But um, it's really pretty simple. I did find out a few things that, you know, you have to have, like, the, the Korg module app running and the IM1 and then um, and then uh, key stage here will recognize it all but um, so if I go in and I say okay um, I want this one to be fantasy there's where I set my um, parameters from oh I know what I was going to show you right here if I go into this is the other cool thing is the, the Korg keyboard whatever keyboard I'm using uh, here at the church, because it just stays here at the churches, um, I use this Korg SV1, and it's set on MIDI channel 1, but you can see I've got each of these other modules or sound apps set to different channels. And so in those apps, I have it set to receive on channel 5, channel 4, channel 3, and channel 1, or channel 2. And they, I can tell it here, this is where I want it to come from. And you can see iConnect Audio has just like a whole slew of things coming in. And um, down here you can see the Launch Key Mini. Now, actually, the Launch Key Mini is not hooked up to that. Because if I play this, um, you can see actually where it's coming in. And this is brilliant on, on the developer's part for Key Stage. Everyone else needs to do this. You can see it's actually hooked up right now to host port number two, which corresponds to where it's plugged in here on the on the um, on the USB hub, and if I play on the Korg big keyboard, you can see it's set to come in from there. Now, for some reason, I wanted to use my launch key. All I'd have to do is turn that port on, and then when I played this, I would be able to play. Um, let's see, I don't remember which one we're even dealing with, but that's the other part of this, the MIDI output. If I go to MIDI output now. Um, you can see it's going to IM1. And any of my apps that are up and working, you can see modules down there, IM1, Audio Kit Synth 1, and Digital 1. Or it will send out, if I wanted to send it out back out, for instance, if I wanted to use the sounds from the Korg, I would send it back out um, 
to this port right here, and I could actually play the, the sounds from inside here, but I just haven't done that. Um, so it's between the connection abilities of the iConnect audio interface, which gives me um, an iPad. I don't know if you guys have looked at these, but they're really cool because on the back of this, it's kind of hard because there's no lights. I should have brought my flashlight. But I've got my iPad plugged in here, which charges my iPad while I use it. And uh, that's critical because this stuff uses a lot of the battery power, like fast. And then right next to it is a port where if I wanted to tie in my laptop, I could do that. So now I've got audio from my iPad and audio from my laptop both coming in. And then this port right here is the... Um, port that runs my USB hub. And then on the back, there's actually some normal, the old fashioned MIDI DIN plugs, the, the five pin buggers. And uh, so any, uh, like my rolling keyboard or this cord one, anything that just supports, you know, the old standard circle MIDI plugs will work. And I've got four outputs and a headphone jack back here. And um, up front, I could even tie in audio from four different devices, which I'm not doing right now because I'm just, I'm not a one man band. So, and then tonight I'm just running over through that little monitor there that I don't even know what kind of it is. Looks like Euro Live, whatever. Because it's just a stage monitor. You know, normally we send it out to the house. Um, but it's really cool. So, um, just a little demo if I go to Hope here. And then to the chorus part. And we can switch over to angels. And then um, the cool part is this is not actually the interface you use. You use the live performance interface, and it's just so clean. And you can see here for um, for this part of angels we've heard on high. Actually, for the whole for the whole song, I've, I've changed keys inside. So the music's in the key of F. We played in the key of C. And some of the times these volume sliders work, and sometimes no. And you see down here in the bottom, it says here, this is what you just came from. This is what you're going to. And there's some other things here at the bottom. I'll explain those in maybe another post. Um, but now here's another cool thing is I can set these two buttons right here. If I go backwards, it'll actually go back to the previous preset. I can go all the way back to the beginning, and you can see now there's nothing there. So I, I know I'm back, back at the beginning, and I can just really quick. It's just so easy to see what's next. Hit the next button. Next. Next. And all these parts have changed. And you can see, find, oh, there we go. So like on this one, I've set that Korg IM1 to not even be the whole part of the keyboard. It's only um, the upper portion. And um, I've turned volume down in some of them. And uh, it's just so easy to change some of those parameters like that and to very quickly call up um, the, the um, different sounds. It's such a fun part. Sometimes when you change patches, it holds some of the sounds. I haven't quite figured that one out. See, like that one just cut it right out. Anyways, just an interesting look. Key Stage is the name of this app. Um, oops, sorry about that. I'll drop my camera. Um, and oh, there's the icon right there. And you can see what I did here with, with my iPad is I just put key stage up there, the iConnect audio stuff, and then I've got my synth modules that I use right there. And it's just it's been a lot of fun. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Over and out.